Y'all know the story already, you know what I'm saying? You used to be my dog, you was in my left You know, screen right or die, I thought you would die with me, you know? What happened was, you know, like I said, I had the crazy track record, Def Jam, everything was good. You know, I go to do the sixth album, and you know, Jay -Z somebody became else president. takes over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, when he first got the job, he hit me with the call like, yo, dog, that makes us run to the building like, yo, you good? <laughs> Finish the album, shoot the video. What happened? Let's go on vacation and, you know, uh, we don't know. What do you mean you don't know? He was so competitive with me. I never met a human being more competitive <laughs> with me, like ever, not even my big brother. Like, no one. Um, we met battling. That's how, that's how we met. We was in the Bronx wow. in the pool hall. After that battle, we he went to like a show. He got on stage, Jay-Z, where you at? <laughs> I was like, this guy is nuts. If you want to watch this video completely uncensored and uncut, you can watch this version on my Patreon for just $2 patreon.com slash John Anthony HD. In the mid 80s, a stick up kid who went under the stage name Darkman X would begin beatboxing in New York for a local rapper named Reddy Ron. The two began doing shows together where DMX would beatbox and provide ad libs. DMX would primarily start dedicating himself to writing raps while incarcerated in 1988 for a carjacking. DMX would make an appearance on the Stretch Armstrong and Bobito show in January 1991 where he would freestyle. The Source magazine would feature DMX under the unsigned hype column. That year, DMX would sign a management deal with Rough Riders Entertainment. Later that year, DMX would sign a Columbia Records, subsidiary label Chaos Records, and Rough House Records. In 1993, DMX dropped his major label debut single, Born Loser. This single was a commercial failure, and after this, DMX would be terminated from his contract with Rough House Records and become independent. In the mid-1980s, another fellow New York rapper from Brooklyn, New York, would begin pursuing his career as a rapper under the rap name Jay-Z. Jay-Z would be involved in a lot of battles in the early 90s with LL Cool J. Darkman X, aka DMX, was known for being a grimy dude in the streets who would also frequently rap battle other MCs, so it was no surprise that these two would eventually end up battling each other. In 1993 is where Jay-Z and DMX would officially cross paths for the very first time. DMX and Jay-Z first battled in a small pool hall in the Bronx in 1993, while Big L actually filmed, but Big L only managed to film Jay-Z's portion of the battle. Jay-Z the greatest back and I shook up the world. I let up the spot like a glow in the dark clock. My job is done. Peace, I'm back to the block. Yeah! Yeah! Two people who actually witnessed the battle, Ski Beats and Wad Dean, who was the co-founder of Rough Riders, detailed the battle. Wad Dean said, in quotes, Jay-Z spoke a little bit more, X flowed more, Jay-Z talked more in his rhymes. Ski Beats said, in quotes, it was both of their styles at their purest forms. DMX was definitely on that barking that whole thing. That was his whole persona. His voice was just raw. Jay was the big willy, hustler, poster child king. Now, if you're wondering who won the battle, both sides claim that their men won. DMX would speak on this battle in his autobiography titled Earl, which was released in 2002, saying, in quotes, At the beginning, we were both chilling on the side. But when things started getting nasty and Harlem Nights and Original Flavors started dissing each other, the crowd started eyeing the two of us. The people knew that we were the top dogs of our crews, and they wanted us to go at it. And after a few more rounds, I just couldn't stand on the side anymore. It was time to hold it down for the fam. I knew it was close. Jay had many rhymes as I did, told stories, talked sh flipped styles. I never liked my battles to be close, because when it was close, then you'd always get some clown to be like, f that, my man ate you, when it wasn't even like that. I liked there to be no f***ing way for anybody to say anything, but that didn't happen this time. That's why I started worrying. DMX would go on to say that he overheard Dame Dash hint that X won the battle when he said, in quotes, yo, your man did kind of get him. According to one of the founders of Rough Riders named D, the relationship would become awkward after this battle, so the seeds were planted for tension to begin rising between these two. A year later, while DMX was making a splash in the underground scene, in 1994, Suge Knight became interested in signing DMX to Death Row Records to represent Death Row East, but midway through their meeting, DMX walked out after not liking the deal he was offered. During this time, Jay-Z was selling burned CDs out of his car to try to get a buzz. After no major record label wanted to give him a record deal, Jay-Z, along with his manager Damon Dash and Kareem Burke, would found their very own independent label called Rockefeller Records through Priority Records in 1994. In 1995, Jay-Z and DMX would once again cross paths. This time, DJ Irv, a friend of DMX at the time, would introduce him to another New York rapper named Ja Rule. 
At the time, Ja Rule was a part of the group Cash Money Click. Irv had also recently been working with another New York rapper named Mike Geronimo. Irv would contact DMX to feature on Mike Geronimo's track called Time to Build, which was released on November 28, 1995. DMX would lay down his verse, and a couple days later, Irv Gotti would actually decide to put Jay-Z on the track as well. Now, according to DMX, there was no beef between them at the time, and before this encounterment, they haven't even seen or spoken to each other since their battle at the pool hall a couple of years back. When Jay-Z arrived at the studio to record his verse, he was allegedly upset when Irv told him that DMX's verse was going to close the track instead of his verse, because back in the day, whoever closed the track was viewed as the best. On his verse, Jay-Z decided to throw subliminal disses towards DMX, and this is where this beef would officially take to wax. DMX got wind of Jay-Z's disses, so he went to Irv Gotti and yelled at him, frustrated that he didn't get a chance to respond back, and that if he knew that there would be a battle on wax, he would have, in quotes, finished him. Irv responded by saying that it wasn't safe to have Jay-Z and DMX in the same room, to which DMX saw as an excuse for Jay-Z. On June 25th, 1996, Jay-Z dropped his debut studio album, Reasonable Doubt. This album only sold 43,000 copies in its first week, but would go on to be a classic and could be considered by many to be one of the greatest hip-hop albums ever released. Eventually, in 1997, Jay-Z would ink a new distribution deal with Def Jam, and that year, he dropped his second studio album, In My Lifetime, Volume 1, on November 4th, 1997. This would be Jay-Z's official Def Jam debut, and the album went on to sell 138,000 copies in its first week. Earlier that year, in May of 1997, DMX would also sign to Def Jam after DMX's close friend at the time, Irv Gotti, introduced X to the then president of Def Jam. The next year, on May 19th, 1998, DMX dropped his debut studio album, It's Dark and Hell is Hot. This album was an instant classic, selling 251,000 copies first week, debuting at number one on the US Billboard 200, and featured smash hits like Rough Riders Anthem and many more. This is where tensions between DMX and Jay-Z would begin rising. After DMX dropped his debut album, he was easily the hottest rapper in the world. This is where I think Jay-Z would begin getting jealous of DMX's success, seeing how X was already a bigger artist than him. In late 1998, DMX and Nas started in the movie Belly, and it's been rumored that Jay-Z was actually supposed to have DMX's role in this movie, but directors thought DMX was the better fit for the role. Jay-Z would actually speak on this rumor, debunking it during an interview with Complex in October 2023, saying, in quotes, That's a rumor. Again, because of how guarded I was, I hated acting. This is why I don't act, because I would get in my way. I would be thinking, no, I don't want to do something that ain't gonna look cool. But you know, I was young and immature, or I was young mentally. You know, if you see our own movies, I was in for like 30 seconds, and I wasn't even speaking. I had no idea how Nas did that, because I felt like he was in the same place as me. But he did it, and he made it work. But I was never meant to be in Belly. I don't even know where that came from. A couple of months later, on September 29th, 1998, Jay-Z dropped his third studio album, Volume 2, Hard Knock Life, which would go on to sell 350,000 copies first week. And on this album would be where Jay-Z and DMX would officially collab on a major label album for the first time on the track Money Cash. Later that year, on December 22nd, 1998, DMX dropped his second studio album, Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood which would sell an astonishing 670,000 copies in the first week and would become DMX's second album in the same year to reach number one on Billboard. On this album, Jay-Z was actually a feature on the track Blackout, so on the forefront, it seemed as if these two were cool with each other, but that really wasn't the case. As egos kept rising, so did the tensions between the two. The next year of 1999 is where DMX and Jay-Z would go on the Hard Knock Life tour together alongside Ja Rule. Backstage on one of the shows during the tour, DMX and Jay-Z were caught on film freestyling together.
Going here, take these phone. My things, I got things that make spin. Put n in the wind, but you never see niggas again. A blessing nigga with stitches with thin tight. And a straight razor will put pinstripes across your windpipe. <laughs> <laughs> Jay-Z would later reveal just how competitive he and DMX were with each other, especially during this tour, when he appeared on HBO's The Shop in May of 2021. A little bit just about like what he meant to the culture and maybe meant to you personally. By the way, the first time I boycotted the Grammys was for him. We both came out that year. He didn't get nominated. He dropped two albums, had two number one albums in the, the same year. year. Yeah, same year. Right. I remember that. Yeah. They didn't even nominate him. The I won that year, year for rap album. So my first Grammy win, I wasn't in. I wasn't even in the building because I boycotted the fam. So there was a there was a, a competitive thing, but it was big love. He was so competitive with me. I never met a human being more competitive <laughs> with me, like ever. Not even my big brother, like no one. Um, we met battling. That's how, that's how we met. We was in the Bronx wow. in the pool hall. After that battle, we he went to like a show. He got on stage. Jay Z, where you at? <laughs> I was like, this guy is nuts. <laughs> he was just all passion. My fondest memory of DMX uh, is he, he improved my stage show. Remember, rap tours wasn't going out at that time. There's no rap tours before. Right. Maybe the Fresh Fest in the 80s or sometime, yeah, but, but there's not, no not rap like, yes. shows. Me, DMX, Method Man, Red Man, Chai, The Locks, this tour is packed. First night, 360 mm. sold out. Everyone has a great show. Meth and Red are flying in the they're audience. Right. They're, they're, oh, incredible they're doing the whole performance. Incredible performance. They're incredible great, yeah. performance. Yeah. Everyone's destroying it. So X is about to go on, and I'm like, you know, I want to see. I got and like X a is little, before you. Yes. X is going before yep. me. The lights are up. He's in the hallway. He goes, it goes, doom, doom. Oh. Yeah, I just got the chair. And now the, 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 the arena is shaking. And I'm like, doom. this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes, doom, doom. And then he goes, <laughs> and the f***ing arena goes crazy. <laughs> First of all, deafening, and I'm like, oh, sh <laughs> He's running back and forth. He has a thing like a Alizé and Hennessy mix. It looks like blood. <laughs> like he's drinking blood, right? And he's running back and forth. Run, run, two, one, two, here he yeah. goes, go, go. And going halfway through the show, then he takes his shirt off. And they go, oh, the girls are screaming, again. ah! <laughs> and the chain, the dog chain. Yeah, the dog there. chain is dripping and he's going nuts, right? And I'm like, shit. <laughs> this is halfway through. Now the first the guys are going crazy. Now the girls are going crazy. And then he gets to the end and he starts a prayer. Oh my god. And now they're crying. Yeah. The whole arena is crying. Yeah. They're crying tears. And I'm like, they're like, hey, now you go. <laughs> I had hard knock life boss. It was like, it's a hard knock life. Put your hands up, people. Every, everybody finished the, uh, the, the show that night. Everybody's happy, by the way. And I was like, we got 56 dates of this. And I was like, but I had to figure, I'm like, okay, I have to figure out my space in this. Yes. You know, I have to figure out where, where do I exist. And I was like, in my, my, in my opinion, in my mind, this is what I believe. I was like, he can't rap better than me. So he, on that tour was the most acapellas ever. Every, everything was, cut the music off. I'm the Duke of Duke of Duke. <laughs> 1999, DMX, Jay-Z, and Ja Rule would form the supergroup known as Murder, Inc. As a collective, they didn't last long before the group ultimately disbanded. There's multiple reasons as to why the group didn't work out. For one, DMX had issues with Ja Rule at the time for supposedly copying his style. If you want a full breakdown on DMX and Ja Rule's beef, check out my video I made on that beef. I'll link it in the description. The other reason why Murder Inc. failed as a group is because of the egos of DMX and Jay-Z clashing. DMX and Jay-Z both wanted to be the leader of the group. And as I said before, in 1999, DMX was not only the hottest rapper, but easily the biggest artist in the world, and Woodstock 1999 is clear evidence of that. Jay-Z seeing DMX being bigger than he ever was clearly didn't sit right with him, which ultimately led to what was to come in the coming years between Jay-Z and DMX. In 2001 is where this beef would start to get heated. According to Nas, Jay-Z would tell him that DMX wasn't that great of an MC, basically calling DMX overrated. DMX would catch wind of this, and on August 7th, 2001, Jadakiss dropped his debut studio album Kiss the Game Goodbye. On the track Uh Huh features DMX, 
And on the opening verse, DMX would officially take to wax to diss Jay-Z, sending a subliminal shot saying that he gave Jay-Z the crown as the king of New York, only to shoot it off his head. I only gave you the crown so I could shoot it off your f***ing head. Y'all is f***ing dead. You heard what the f*** I said. Jada Kiss also sent a shot at Jay-Z on the track when he referenced Tupac and Jay-Z's beef before Tupac died, saying he knows the reason why Tupac didn't like him. On the fourth verse of the track, Jadakiss actually dissed Beanie Siegel, who as you know was Jay-Z's artist under Rockefeller Records. Jay-Z wouldn't respond to these subliminals and this beef seemingly died out. DMX always said that he had nothing but respect for Jay-Z, even after the battle at the Bronx Pool Hall, but in 2004 is where things would take a turn for the worse. In 2003, Jay-Z would drop his final album, The Black Album, before supposedly retiring from hip-hop. After retirement, Jay-Z would officially be named the new president of Def Jam in 2004. This is where Jay-Z's jealousy towards DMX would come into play. According to DMX, after becoming president of Def Jam, Jay-Z called DMX to let him know that DMX is running Def Jam as DMX was gearing up to drop his sixth studio album titled Here We Go Again. After Jay-Z picked a single, DMX went and shot a video for it. After that, DMX tried contacting Jay-Z about his album rollout, to which Jay-Z would allegedly go on vacation and keep telling DMX that he doesn't know if he wants to drop the album or not. According to DMX himself, he felt as if Jay-Z was trying to eliminate the competition, going back to what I said earlier about how Jay-Z was always envious of DMX being the bigger artist than him, so in DMX's eyes, this was Jay's way of seemingly killing his momentum, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, now let's yeah. talk. Let's talk about the career. Let's go back a little bit. Now yeah. you, were, you you sold millions and millions and millions of yeah. records, and then all of a sudden you slowed down. It just seemed like you just stopped. Was it the fact that you had a problem with Def Jam? Was it the producers? Was you were, you know with Rough Riders? What was what made DMX stop recording? And, <laughs> uh, and we being truthful because we want to know. We haven't yeah. heard from X in I mean, a long my, time. Y'all know the story already. You know what I'm saying? He used to be my dog. You was in my left. You know, screenwriter die. I thought you would die with me. You know, what happened was. You know, like I said, I had the crazy track record, Def Jam, everything was good. You know, I go to do the sixth album, and, you know, Jay -Z somebody became else president. takes over. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, when he first got the job, he hit me with the call, like, yo, dog, inmates is running the building, like, yo, you good. Mm -hmm. Finish the album, shoot the video. What happened? Mm -hmm. Go on vacation and, you know, uh -oh, we don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you listen to a whole album, mm -hmm. pick a single, shoot a video, they don't know? Mm -hmm. hmm, okay, I see what's really good. You're trying to eliminate the competition. Mm -hmm. You know, because at first you retire, mm -hmm. you know, you know, then get me off the label, now you're back rapping again. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's a, I mean, it's all good. That's all good. In January 2006, DMX would leave Def Jam and sign with Columbia Records and would finally begin the rollout to his sixth studio album, which was now renamed Year of the Dog again, due to 2006 being the year of the dog in the Chinese New Year. On August 1st, 2006, DMX finally dropped his sixth studio album, Year of the Dog Again, which would go on to sell 126,000 copies first week and was DMX's first album at this point to not reach number one on the Billboard 200, so it seemed as if Jay-Z's whole plan to kill X's momentum worked. Later that year, Jay-Z would actually come out of retirement. On November 21st, 2006, Jay-Z dropped his comeback album, Kingdom Come. DMX also felt some type of way about this being that Jay-Z ironically came out of retirement as soon as DMX's momentum was killed. After that, DMX would go on a long hiatus from music after facing legal trouble, but in some interviews, he would actually speak on the whole situation with Jay-Z and how he stopped this album from coming out. Well, so being that, being, being that you're not on Def Jam no more, you know, what's your relationship with Jay-Z? You know what I mean? Did that shit get affected by you not uh, leaving a label or whatever? Somewhat, somewhat, you know what I'm saying? Somewhat, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, I knew from the beginning it put him in an awkward situation. Mm -hmm. So I, I got to get into consideration, you know what I'm saying? It's like it put him in a real awkward situation. Like, yo, we've been, that's, that's my dog for a minute, son, you know what I'm saying? It's like one of the few rappers I respected and was like genuinely happy to see him when I saw him, you know what I'm saying? And that, that, that's put us both in an awkward situation. Yeah. Awkward well, situation. Yeah, the, the records together and all of that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, 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 I genuinely f with him. Yeah. I, I, I think he tried to hold me down. Right, right. You know, but it wasn't much he could do, and then that comes with putting yourself in that predicament. You know what I mean it's like I ain't gonna put myself in a place where I gotta walk around with handcuffs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You don't do that. You don't say, all right, I'll take a job, but I gotta walk around with handcuffs. Cause then I might punch you in the face. Then what you gonna do? You got handcuffs. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, that is what it is, man. Right. I don't give a fuck. I, I say what I mean. Me and Jay had a battle. I got in his ass. I got in his ass before I got signed. Got in his ass. And this, so, this, this was there. You know, this, no. 
than in the pool hall in the Bronx. You know, you know. So sure. I, I, I with him after that, and had respect for him after that, until he became the president of Def Jam. And I ain't gonna say too much more about it. But you know what it is. There's a difference between doing wrong and being wrong. There's a difference between doing wrong and being wrong. And at one point you were being wrong. Right? We're here. Right? But niggas can't do it like we could. Niggas can't do it. Niggas couldn't do it like we're able to. We're artists. Jake is a talented motherfucker. Don't misunderstand me. He is talented. But he has no heart behind it. There's no soul behind it. It's motivated by money. Strictly. He is talented. But it's strictly motivated by money. I did this. I got that. I did this. Stay show. This. 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 this, this. I, I, I'm told. And I was like, wow. Wow. That's all you have to give? That, that, that's, that's it? <laughs> I mean, change your face. But I still maintain the respect because our birthdays are the same month. And, you know, we, was, we, you know, we had the history. So I maintain the respect. So I lost it when you became the president. That's why I left that jam. You know, when you, when you, got, when you became the president, you hit me, me, me the call. <laughs> Dog, inmates run in the building. You know what that means? That's like, you know, the, your man is in charge. You know what I mean? Yo, dog, the inmates run the building. I'm like, yeah, that's what it is, baby. Because we got history. We got, you know, we good. And then you go and do that. You come down, listen to my and say, yo, you, oh, nigga, you, we ready. And then go on vacation. Wow. Wow. Did you take a picture of you with Jim Cletus on? And that's what you mean? That's what you going for, son? You mean? That's, that's what you walk out on your man for, son? Was it flip flops? You serious? You serious? I respected you, son. Real talk, man. I respected you, yo. I'm in my feelings about that. Real I'm in my feelings about that. I'm, I'm hurt behind that one. I don't talk about it. I ain't never talked about it, but I'm hurt behind it. On November 15th, 2010, DMX was performing at the venues in Scottsdale, Arizona, where he would diss Jay-Z on stage saying, in quotes, New York to AZ, dudes must be crazy. I'm the dog. Fuck Jay-Z. What do y'all think is the state of the rapper you see right now? I mean, you know, I'm an artist, so I kind of have biased views, but I think most of you dudes suck. I think they not only suck, but they suck dick. Correct me if I'm wrong, but we're real people. But we got all these dudes talking about Bentleys and mansions and pool parties. We don't got that shit, son. My take on this is, if you got Patron in your cup, good for you. You got a bitch you wanna fuck, good for you. You sitting on 24s, good for you. You got Lamborghini doors, good for you. Because at the end of the day, I ain't got that shit. I don't really give a fuck if you got that shit, because you ain't giving it to me. On August 16th, 2011, Tate Masters Inc. dropped the mixtape, I'm On One Part 2, which had a track called Otis Freestyle, which saw Busta Rhymes and DMX actually rapping over the beat for Jay-Z and Kanye's song Otis. After that, this beef completely died down until in 2016. In April 2016, DMX would appear on Drink Champs, and he briefly spoke about his first battle with Jay-Z at the Bronx Pool Hall, and he went on to say that he won the battle and never lost a battle in his life. Right. So, Axe, listen. Constructive it, it, criticism. It's, it's a famous story that said that when you and Jay-Z battled, right? Mm. Yeah, because this, this battle happened, right? Correct? A couple times. A couple of times. I was, it wasn't just once. Nah. So when you were when the people uh, uh, so, so, to so to big, what happened backstage. We heard that Burp, Big L had that one battle. They, they said that Big L was that battle. Do you remember Big L being there? Uh, I vaguely, I, vaguely. I, no, I, I can't say. Not that. at all. I, I know Big L. <laughs> yeah. I know Big L. I'm a fan. Right. But you was trying to take Jay Z out. Of, this is the Big L. What it was? It was um, Rough Riders had Harlem Nights. Mm. Right. It was from 135th Broadway, the project building right there. Um, and um. Um, um, and J uh, J Crew was a uh, um original flavor. Uh, original flavor. Right. Before they was rocking. Right. They had, their, their Hawaiian, they had their Hawaiian soup and shit. All that. Uh -huh. So they was it was their it was their battle. Oh, so you battled him during he yeah, was, was, was like, oh. like I was the big gun on on on, on, on my side. Yeah. And he was the big gun with them. And it wasn't Rockefeller, it was original flavor. Nah, I was the original flavor was the, was the group. Oh, wow. 
This is this is true. So it was no Rockefeller then. There no was no Rockefeller. Nah, Dame Dash was there. Jay Z was there. Um, right. um, you know, they whole crew, the rich people, uh, whatever. Right. Yeah. The Hawaiian Sophie. Right. <laughs> so right. how you calling it? Hawaiian Sophie? Yeah, that Hawaiian Sophie. The original flavor was the name of the group. Right. right. Okay. And um, what? So let's just let's one thing get I, to one the thing point. I will give Jay Z respect for. Who won that? Battle? Okay. I've never lost a battle. I've right. never right. lost let's a battle. Noise for the I've never okay. lost a battle. Oh, never. On June 28, 2016, DMX appeared on the Breakfast Club when he was asked if he spoke to Jay Z since the beef and if he would reconcile with him. You and you and Jay do shots at each other before. Have y'all seen each other and oh. dapped it out and spoke? Mm -hmm. um, you burying a lot of hatches though. It could happen. Of course, yeah, of course it happened. I mean, I, uh... Later that year, in October 2016, at Beyonce's Grand Family World Tour in New Jersey at the MetLife Stadium, DMX, Ja Rule, and Jay-Z all linked up thanks to DJ Khaled, who brought them together. Fast forward to May 2020 is where this beef would spark back up. On May 7, 2020, DMX appeared on a virtual edition of the Drink Champs podcast. Noriega asked, asked who he would like to face in a versus battle, and without hesitation, DMX said Jay-Z. A couple weeks later, Noriega posted a video of DMX on the phone naming potential opponents for his versus battle, and would continue challenging Jay-Z, even referring to him as his arch nemesis. <laughs> What about him? Yeah, yeah, that's what's going on. Don't say that. 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 Don't say that's what I'm talking, that's what I'm saying, that's why it should be done. It's a celebration, we celebrate music. You know he got some, he got some hits too. He can play money, he, he, he can play uh, money cash. Then I can play money cash, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know? Okay, well, uh, make the album. Go. <laughs> Go. Okay, so let me ask you a question. And this goes into the second question I was going to ask. Was there ever a battle between yourself and Jay-Z? Because there was rumors that that actually happened in the pool room. I don't know if it was yeah, in the yard. No yeah, yeah. Instead of asking me, ask him. I want to know the result. I'm here with you. I want to know. I mean, so you heard about it, so you already know what the answer is. But, but the instead of me answering that question, ask him. Ask him. Just put it like this. He was he was with original flavor and I was with Harlem Knights. You know what I'm saying? That was my man to them. Those were his man to them. And after the, the, the two man to them got their battle on, you know, we, we, we had our little situation. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Put it like this. I ain't never lost a battle. I'm a battle rapper. I'm a battle rapper. I ain't never lost a battle. Ain't, ain't, ain't a motherfucker breathing. Ever say they wrap me up in a battle. Ever. 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 Can't be serious. Listen, I personally... I started off battle. My first rap was a battle. What? My first one. The first thing I wrote was a battle round. Come on, son. I, I do this for a different reason. X, I think that if you battle Jay on Instagram versus, it will literally break the internet. It will break the yeah. internet. I, will I, mean, be... listen, I don't know what it's going to do. I don't know what it's going to do. I'm really worried about what it's going to do, but... I know people would love to see that. Well, I would love to see it. I know the fans I'm... would love to see that because we're at a time where, you know, we, we can't do shows. You know, we can't do appearances and all that. So, I mean, when you talk about doing for the culture, hey, hey, what what, 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 what better situation to have? What better I, I'm telling you, that'll be the one. That'll be the one. Okay. After this, the beef died down and DMX would unfortunately pass away on April 9th, 2021. It's a shame that DMX and Jay-Z never got the chance to make music again because these two are amongst the greatest that hip-hop has to offer. DMX and Jay-Z always had a competitive relationship, so it's no surprise that it would be the competitiveness that would drive these two to become enemies at a certain point. If this beef escalated into a full-on battle with diss tracks back and forth, who do you think would have won? DMX or Jay-Z?